best of my abilities. To the best, best of my abilities. In the service of the Ghana Publishers Association. In the service of the Ghana Publishers Association. I pledge to work. I pledge to work. In a concerted effort. In a concerted effort. With other council members. With other council members. Stakeholders. Stakeholders. And other organizations. And other organizations towards achieving the goals and objectives of the association. Towards achieving the goals and objectives of the association. I pledge to support. I pledge to support. And work with the Secretariat and the entire membership. And work with the Secretariat and the entire membership. Of the association. Of the association. In championing the course of the association. In championing the course of the association. Finally. Finally. I swear that I will not, I swear that I will not knowingly, knowingly receive, receive directly or indirectly, directly or indirectly any money or other valuable thing, any money or other valuable thing for the performance or non-performance performance or non-performance of any act or duty, of any act or duty pertaining to my office. Pertaining to my office. Other than what is allowed by law. Other than what is allowed by law. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. I would like to request you to please remember why we joined this association and what we have subscribed to by endorsing our constitution. Some of us have been in the association for a long time, others joined recently. What I know is that we have had some interaction amongst us, either collectively or as individual members. Some of us have had the opportunity to work together bilaterally, serving on committees, boards, and delegations. Whatever may have necessitated those bilateral or multilateral relationships should not override the overall sense of purpose for which we subscribe to when we join this association. It is important for us to work with objectivity, reason, and pragmatism in furtherance of the aspirations of the Ghana Publishers Association. Together, we must focus on the broad objectives of the association and work together for a successful outcome in the next three years. Madam Chair, having made my preliminary comments, I would like to make a few points. The world of publishing has been changing since the 1980s and very rapidly after the year 2000. The old era has ended. The new dawn has little or no prospect for publishers who are stuck to the old ways of the profession. The changes in our industry have been very revolutionary. Bold measures and strong values are required to promote our collective aspirations. We must have the courage to accept our short thoughts and embrace without complacency the new direction with renewed strength and determination. is being ushered into service. The time that our survival is faced with varied challenges. The concept of a publisher's association leading the effort to have a collective resolution on issues pertaining to the core activities of practicing publishers is either misconstrued or deliberately frustrated by some public administrators and publishers. Unfortunately, these contestations have rendered the leadership of the Ghana Publishers Association powerless and without pride before the membership. Leadership is the ability to lead and to lead vigorously. However, the unpleasant facts are that we are at a point that we are about throwing up our arms in despair. This is what we must reject, fellow publishers. We must admit it will not be easy to achieve our objectives, but it is possible. We must come forth with our experiences and our skills and demonstrate that this industry which was conceived out of the abundance of the realization that without it, the entire educational system of this country will be faulted. It's still relevant. I am wondering whether this country could stand if this freedom of choice, the opportunities, the alternatives brought us by the creation of the book industry and the liberalization of publishing are replaced with limited opportunities and narrow-mindedness. We cannot afford to be restricted in thought and outlook as a nation. In fact, there is none so transformational as driving consciousness through books. Books offer a variety of reasons 
and theories about life that any person can apply with flexible options. The establishment of the Ghana Publishers Association, which was formerly Ghana Book Publishers Association, was conceived out of a need. There was this clear admission by the Ghana Book Book Council at the time of its establishment in 1975, that there can be no book development without publishers. The GBDC understood the importance of having a strong book industry with the publishers as the fulcrum. This understanding was with full support of the Ministry of Education. The rapid growth of the book industry in Ghana and the conscious indigenization of the book industry, particularly book publishing, paved the way for Ghana to have a strong base for its educational transformational transformation agenda. Ghana, by the end of the 80s, had been able to develop its own textbooks and readers, eventually becoming the standard for our textbook development strategy. Stories for children and creative writing were at the forefront of this indigenization. The Publishers Association has, over the years, encouraged its members to fully indigenize. The textbooks and other reading materials used in schools for basic to secondary are mostly written and published in Ghana by Ghanaian publishers. In 2004, the government through the Ministry of Education liberalized the textbook market. And for the first time in the history of Ghana, publishers could write, develop, and own the rights to their textbooks. This was a major factor in the growth of the book industry that we have witnessed in the last 50 years. Between 2004 and 2016, the Ministry of Education through the Ghana Education Service procured teaching and learning materials in excess of $800 million. That is a respectable investment. However, in spite of this investment, the country is yet to attain the one textbook per child policy. It is even harder to achieve when it comes to readers and early grades. Every effort has always been explored by this association to maintain a mutually beneficial relationship with the Ministry of Education and all its agencies. We have worked with the Ministry of Education in the past with successful results. For instance, our advocacy to open up the publication of school textbooks to private participation was what led to the government and the Ministry of Education divesting itself from textbook publishing. We were able to find a common vision with the Ministry of Education to open the school textbooks to, for mar uh, textbook market to private initiative. This is how we had the first public procurement of textbooks from the private sector in 2004. However, I would admit that the relationship has been challenged for some time now. Madam Chair, before we step out to investigate the phenomenon, I want to invite us on the journey of self-introspection. To prevent incursions from Mongolians and warring nomads, the Chinese built a high wall around their city. They, however, forgot that the wall converged at a point with the gate and the gate was to be guarded by men who were expected to be vigilant, disciplined, and committed. The invasions did not stop. Somehow, the Mongolians found their way into the city without breaking an inch of the wall. The guards at the entrance allowed them through the gates. The Chinese were very successful in building such a wonderful wall, but one thing they realized later was the character of the wall guards. Through, though the gate, great wall, has over the years become a powerful symbol of the country's enduring strength and spirit, it has been a good reminder to the Chinese of the superiority of the human character. That is exactly what has happened to publishers and the book industry today. After so many years of working to have a functional industry, at some point we allowed ourselves to be consumed by the fortunes of the trade and selfishness. Our focus as individual published firms was to win every contract at all costs failing to protect the gates. William Shakespeare gave us some words worthy of consideration in his great work, Julius Caesar. Cassius, who had engaged Brutus in dialogue on how they could stop Caesar from assuming absolute power, said this, the fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves, that we are underlings. What this tells us is that it is not fate, but weakness of one's character and focus that forces a person to act against his or her will. We must admit as publishers that we have allowed mediocrity and lack of vision to work against us. We never considered that sustaining a relationship 
was equally important as cultivating same. We failed to commit resources and effort to our working strategy. The energies that helped us conduct a successful advocacy that enabled us to achieve the right goals and promote our cause were left to dwindle. It was very important that we continue to work and explore cooperation with all relevant stakeholders to increase the scope of our business and by extension, its fortunes. Fellow publishers, business advocacy is a delicate and expensive undertaking. It must be very consistent and engaging. All options must be explored in creating a unique identity for our business. We must be able to hold our own and make people and institutions see us the only option of friendship. Investing heavily in publishing infrastructure has not been a priority for many publishing houses. Developing the supplementary book market was not taken up as an option. And in the absence of such a strategy, we decided to invest the profits from the sale of test school textbooks in other unrelated businesses. As a result, these flourishing areas, such as supplementary readers, tertiary publications, reference books, and other teaching and learning materials, which are foundational to education, were not explored. These markets have been encroached upon by foreign publishers, mostly Nigerian publishers, who found the perfect opportunity and filled the gaps. Fellow publishers, the old way of doing things must be reviewed. We must sit down and talk about what we want as publishers. We must define our relevance. Once that is done, we must strategize to project this relevance, and it should be a sustained one taking advantage of every opportunity, alliances, and diplomacy. We must continue to contribute to policy formulations and implementation. Initiating policy changes to shape our profession must be a priority. The vibrancy of the industry will be determined by the investment stakeholders put into effort at advocacy. This should be able to expand the book industry's influence. We have been looking at the small picture when in need the latter picture shows that we have a lot of space in the market to increase our scope and output. The excellent opportunities that the School of Publishing Studies at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology offers cannot be wasted all because a country, as a country we do not appreciate the value of books and culture. We are unable to absorb the products into the industry because of the slow growth of the industry. This has gradually emboldened the school to dilute the program. Today, it is providing manpower for other businesses rather than their core responsibility. This is at a time that the book industry in Ghana, with the right investment and policies, could be able to employ and offer career opportunities to these young graduates. Whatever is required to be done to make the, Ghana, the Ghanaian book industry vibrant, professional, and secure for the future of our continued business must start now. We must immediately begin to understand the challenges and put together a good strategy to make sure that the best solutions are available for our, us to work on our advocacy. If we do not want to be made redundant, then we must act with an obligation to ensure that we continue to be relevant. We must focus on deepening our engagements with the Ministry of Education and the relevant institutions. The Pub Ghana, Pub Ghana Publisher Association has an important role to play in the state's effort at making books available to support quality education and literacy. Ghanaian publishers, as any other business, are driven by interest and availability of markets. The Ghana Publishers Association cannot be taken out of the dynamics. It is a national project, a cultural institution, playing an important role in developing the cultural industry of Ghana. It is therefore a national interest organization and must be offered every opportunity to succeed. We are amenable to every suggestion and input that will make our relationship with the ministry mutually beneficial. At this stage, I am inviting the Ministry of Education to accept our request for a sincere engagement. We have identified the following areas to be very, very foundational to strengthening the book culture and developing a strong cultural heritage that will define the Ghanaian and the future of our continued prominence in the world that is looking up to the arts as the future for business initiatives. There is therefore the possibility of having to put our hearts and minds together and develop a common sense of purpose to make sure that, one, books are considered to be an important cultural product 
worthy of state preservation. Two, the book industry must, is viewed as an important cultural heritage institution that provides an excellent opportunity for the promotion of history and culture. Three, develop national strategies regarding books and library development. Four, develop guidelines for the promotion of books in indigenous language. Make books and authorship one of the cornerstones of our cultural heritage. Six, develop a country strategy to promote books as an export resource and a revenue generation component. This has been done over the years by the United Kingdom and other countries who have made billions of dollars and pounds in exporting their brand of literature and their brand of culture. We can do it. Seven, to encourage the publication of books on history, culture, and human development. Eight, work to improve on our literary, literary development and book standards. We need the right legal framework and enabling policies such as the National Book Procurement Policy, a National Book Procurement Strategy, and the National Reading and Literacy Program. We create an enabling business environment with a view to attract new investments into the Ghanaian book industry. This one I'm saying with some passion, that Ghana, looking at the West African zone, at least, we have the edge and we can become the publishing hub, if not for the continent, for West Africa. And if we are able to have a sense of vision as a country, publishers, the Ministry of Education, Foreign Affairs, Trade, it is possible for us to do that. Bef before I conclude, let me comment on two important institutions, namely the Ghana Book Women Council and the National Council for Curriculum Assessment. Currently, the effectiveness of these two institutions have been reduced as a result of the lack of well-defined roles and the strong legal foundation to empower them. The GBDC has a pending bill that is yet to be considered and passed to enable it to play its expected role in the industry. NACA, even though it has been catered for under the Education Act of 2008, their mandate and regulatory role have not been well defined in this act. We believe further review will help situate NACA as a regulatory authority. In addition, there seems to be an overlap of responsibilities between these two institutions. One, our businesses are affected by the operations of these institutions. Therefore, it is important that we have an active engagement and a mutually beneficial relationship with them to create confidence and security for the industry. The Ministry of Education is assured of a relationship founded on a strong legal regime. Laws, regulations, guidelines for the operations of the industry must form the basis of our engagement with the ministry. We do acknowledge the important role of the Ministry of Education and all its relevant agencies in the book industry. Their mandates and responsibilities, when streamlined, will offer us the clarity of engagement. Fellow publishers, this council is poised to work. We bring to this role commitment and sacrifice. What we need from you is to provide guidance and support for our work. Follow what we do and do not hesitate to probe into our daily routines to ensure we are fully committed to the task and charted to us. Madam Chair, the highest demonstration of human wisdom is to proceed with an attitude of humility, being convinced that there is a lot more you do not know than what you do. Every step of the way, there is something new to learn. Failing to acknowledge this fact you miss every opportunity to learn new things in life. We are at your service. We want to work with you and work for you. Whatever resources that are necessary to make us succeed, we humbly ask that you provide, and we shall not disappoint you. May the good Lord guide us and make us great. Thank you very much.